I am super excited to show you guys how I made this beautiful crystal point mold and then check out these crystal points. Let's get to it here on Mooncusser Art. Hi everybody, welcome back to Mooncusser Art. This is Janet and we're going to be making something a little bit different. Of course, it's resin related. I'll be using the Epoxy Resin Stores resins. I have their Super Gloss Resin as well as Liquid Diamonds. And we're going to be seeing if we can make some of our very own crystal points. These are not true crystal. I got these off of Amazon and they are polished. So I like that. They also, they, it's a nice long string um, and it's got varying sizes. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to build some of my crystal points like I usually use in resin uh, for my center pieces, the focal pieces for my geodes. So let's see how this project goes. So I only need a small amount of resin for this part of the project. I'm using the Epoxy Resin Stores Super Gloss. It's a nice thick consistency and it's going to work really well for this project, part of the project. It's going to get thick and it's going to allow me to set the crystal points. I'm using the Black Diamonds. This is their golden purple rain and it just seemed to match the color of the stones that I'm using for this. So I'm small, pouring some small puddles into this silicone mold that I got off of Amazon. It's for baking I believe. I'm not really sure but you can find them all over the place. It just comes in handy for this project and you can see that they're curing away. I'm just going to take a minute to show you guys. You see these, these rings? Of, you can see there's like a ring, right? And so those, some of it, like this one particularly, is well-defined. It's bubbles. Very tiny little micro bubbles. I stirred the resin very quickly. And that's okay. It's not going to cause any problems. I put some of the 99% alcohol in there. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to hit it with a mist of alcohol. All right. So again, it's this is just you know, uh, a, a, this is a beauty supply, very fine mist, right? I and I um, put ninety nine percent alcohol is in here. I don't know why I shake it up, but I do. So this is going to come out as a really fine mist, and it's just to pop those bubbles. I do not want to use any kind of heat on these silicone molds. They're actually for baking. So I don't want to have any issues with these little molds. I use them often. So let's just do a quick little mist. Let's try that again. Yeah. And you can see those bubbles just popping away. Not that this is going to affect anything in this project, but I, it's just a great opportunity for me to show you what's happening there. So that's what I'm going to do for that. I'm going to let these sit here for a little while. I'm also going to show you guys, so this is the little measuring cup that I used. It's just, you know, I don't even know what it's from, but it's got a nice um, quantity. This resin is a one-to-one -one resin, and you measure it by volume. And it's important for everybody to know that when you measure by volume, 
you can figure out your measurement like I usually do. I like to, you know, mark my cups and mix everything in one cup. But you can also use measuring cups or tablespoons or even these little, you know, these little cups work well. And when you're done, you just wipe it out with some resin or you just wipe it out with some alcohol. And I'm using, uh, this is 91% alcohol to do this. You can also use denatured alcohol, which is uh, more uh, cost effective. So I just put some of my alcohol right onto a paper towel. And you can see this little cup is pretty clean. I'm just going to give it one more swipe with a clean paper towel and, you know, push my nail into the corner. You want to be really thorough if you're planning on using these again, which is what I plan on doing. All right, so just clean them up, rub them down as best I can. All right, get all the product off of there that I can. And then once I'm happy with how clean it looks after wiping it with the alcohol then at that point I know there's no more major amounts of resin on here it's all into the paper towel and then I can clean it with some vinegar or some soapy water okay and that's how you can reuse your tools like that so rubbing alcohol um, like I said, the, this is 91% alcohol, but you can use denatured is just as good. All right, so that's that. Now I'm going to let these, you can also see all the droplets of alcohol are evaporating away. And that's fine too. I'm going to let these sit here for mm, about an hour, I think. Maybe even an hour and a half because I want those to get sticky. And that's important for our next step. Right, one more thing while those are sitting there getting thick. I'm to show you some of these little beauties. So you can see they've got a really nice shine on there. It's not a painted shine, that's a polished shine. And that's what I was looking for. All right, so these are the stones I'll be using. I don't know if they're stones or not. Let me see if I can get something white for a background here. So I can show you guys a little bit better, I hope. So can you guys see through there? These are pretty cool. They have like a swirl of the purple in there. So maybe it's glass, you know, I don't know what it is. I didn't make these, but uh, they're, they're beads. They're strung beads. They have a, um, there's the hole. Uh, there's the hole. Hey. So if you wanted to do some bead making, you could use them for that. But I like them for in my geodes. So I normally get these um, at Michael's, but I've been finding, oh, that's a pretty shot, huh? Yeah, me. Um, <laughs> I've been getting them at Michael's in the past. I have loads of them because I buy them when they're on sale. But these are good size. Let's see how big they are. Let me get my ruler. I've had this ruler since my kids were in high school. <laughs> so here's, this is the one I was just showing you. So let's look at how long that is. That's over an inch and a half. That's a nice height. Um, it's about the longest one, I think. Here's one that's kind of long. Long and skinny. So we go there. Yeah, inch and a half. So that's about as long as these are. Some of them are a little thicker than another one. All right. 
a little paler, a little different shade. Pretty little things. All right, now we've come to the fiddly part of this project. I waited two hours. I had tested the resin with a toothpick just to see how sticky it was getting. And after two hours, I felt as if it was in pretty good shape. So you have to just take your time. I'm balancing my center point and then I'll start adding some other ones. I lean them up against the edge of the mold and that'll end up supporting that center point. So I just keep tucking them in around each other. Again, this is, you know, it's kind of slippery still. So if you don't take your time and you look away, the next thing you see is that one of the points has decided to fall over and is now covered in resin. And yeah, you know, it's no fun. So we're just going to keep setting them in. I'm showing you that I'm putting, because these are beads, they have drilled holes in them. I did put a little bit of resin in those holes where I could, but otherwise they're getting buried into the resin and that way they won't have any of the silicone going into them later on. So you just want to make sure that you put that drilled hole down into the resin as best you can. And that way it will get a good result. So make sure you watch for that and just keep building, making quite a few here. And then we're going to let it sit overnight. And now I've batched up a very small amount of resin, again, using the super gloss. And I'm just adding a few more crystal points in around the spots. Putting little puddles in there. Okay, guys. Whoops. Sorry about banging the camera there. So here we are, everything's cured. And let's pop some of these out. And get a little bit better look at them. I know, doesn't that seem like I'm crazy just putting one in there? But you're gonna see, you're gonna see what I'm gonna do with these. All in good time. So let's just pop these out real quick. Here they all are. So, lots to work with here. Now I have to take this outside because I'm going to be using my Dremel and I'm going to be cutting away all this extra around the crystals. But they're very securely mounted into these pieces of resin. It's got a nice flat bottom. Perfectly flat, doesn't wobble at all, so that's good. There's some beauties in here. Ooh. Weer, weer, weer. Okay, outside I go. All right, so I put on my safety equipment and I start working with my Dremel. And I'm just going to use, this is a cutting wheel that's on here, and I just go about cutting right into the hardened resin that's supporting those crystal points and just keep moving it around and grinding through. So this is the look you guys. This is the look. It's lovely. Ooh. But hopefully it's worth it. Okay that's my dusty mess. And I'm just going to wash these with a little bit of soap and water and dry them with a paper towel, get them all sparkly again. And it, this was, you might have noticed, whoops, see how little that wheel got? They actually wear down. Resin is tough stuff. If nobody told you, resin is tough stuff. So that's, I had to quit because it got so small. I'm going to keep it because, you know, maybe getting into some tight spots. But <laughs> here's a look at the one that I replaced. So here it is. 
That's how much it wore down. Amazing. Okay, let's get these inside and clean them up. Well, welcome to the jungle. I like orchids. And a night blooming jasmine is my sweet thing. And this is how I keep them all alive in the winter time. And here I have my slop sink in my laundry room. So there are the crystals and I'm going to give them a wash and some soap and water. All right. So there we go. We just used a little bit of, you know, dishwashing soap and all the dust is washed off. So now I'm going to dry them off carefully with a lint free towel because I don't want to introduce lint to this whole mess. So let's get that done. And there they are dried and shiny. All right, now it's time to start doing a little bit more building. So here's one of my created points and I've got a coffee container lid. It's plastic and I'm using my hot glue gun. So I'm just doing this so that I can make this stay put and stand up nicely for me. I can't keep working in the silicone mold because my space is getting too small. So now I'm just looking at placement. This is one of the single pieces of crystal that I set in resin. You can see it there on the bottom. And there's one of those drill holes. So I just apply a little bit of hot glue onto the resin and then a little drop right on that thread hole because they are beads. I'll go around to the side where I'm going to be attaching it to my structure of crystals and I just place it right on top of that plastic lid and then slide it in, hold it in place to allow the glue to set up. Once it's there, I can let go and move on to building more crystals on there. Okay, back to using my black diamond pigments. Again, this is the golden purple rain. And I wanted to just show you how nicely these mix in to your resin. It just, it's such a fine milled mica powder that it just blends right in there and gives you wonderful intense color. I like to put a couple of drops of 99% alcohol that helps to pop the bubbles. So we're just going to place a little puddle in the middle of the silicone piece here and then I'll set the cluster of crystals right into that puddle. Now I'm building up a little bit of resin onto my popsicle stick. I did let this sit for about 45 minutes so that it got thick because I don't want to pour it too runny. If you pour it when it's really runny, it's gonna go all over the place. And if you pour or use a popsicle stick and let it run very slowly off the stick, you're gonna get a really nice thin line and it, you're gonna have the a better ability of directing it right where you want it in between those crystals. So you want to just let it run slowly right off the stick and then you want to sweep under there to stop it from running. So I'm just going to keep doing that using a toothpick to work it down in between. You can see how nicely it runs in there. Now I'm finding that I'm having a tough time so the resin is still getting thicker. I want to actually warm it up with the flame from this lighter torch. So I just heat up the resin right there on the stick. Be careful you don't set your stick on fire. Not that I've ever done that, but it could happen. So I'm just heating it up because I want it to actually 
get a nice drip right where I need it. So I'll, I keep warming it up until I see that drip start to form. I stop with the flame and I let that drip go right into the spot I need it. There we go. A little bit more heat. Get it to run right in there. I know it's kind of hard to see on my angle, but I got it exactly where I wanted. So that's a nice little trick. One of my pearls of wisdom. All right. It's the next day. Everything is cured. It's been sitting on this little silicone mold. And I'm inspecting. I wanted to make sure that I didn't have any areas in between the stones that it would make it impossible for the silicone to come out. So I'm checking carefully, looking for nice spacing, and everything looks really good at this point. Fantastic. Okay, I've got another coffee can lid, and I'm taping with two-sided tape. I'm taping some popsicle sticks there in the center of that lid to support it so that when I turn it over, it sits flat. This is a solo cup that I have cut the bottom out of, and it's going to sit really nicely. So I put some hot glue on the bottom of my crystals, and I'm going to just set that right there onto the lid. All right, that's plenty of glue. Set it on that lid. And then I'm going to get the cup and I'm going to check the placement to make sure that I have room. And yeah, I'm not happy with that. So I am pulling that back off, removing any of the hot glue that I can. And back to the drawing board. Let's try this again. More hot glue. Good bead of it because we don't want the silicone running in underneath. And let's make sure that we put it exactly where it should be this time. All right, one more quick inspection to make sure that my crystals are located in a good spot. And then I'm just going to fill up. That's kind of like a ditch, a little gutter from that coffee can lid. I'm going to fill that up with the hot glue, try to work carefully, but I want to make sure that it's all the way around. And then I place my cup in there. And press it down. Then I'm going to just do a quick inspection to make sure that that's all cured. Now it's time to start mixing up the silicone. So this is from Tea Expert. It's a one-to-one -one ratio. I've used it before. I'm going to be batching up 100 milliliters. And so it's two parts, equal parts. And I'm going to stir it. This is sped up, but I stirred it very slowly for five minutes so that I was sure that I got a really good mix. The manufacturer has recommended to me that I put the silicone in a refrigerator for about a half an hour, and that's going to allow any bubbles that may have still been in there to come up to the surface. It's going to slow a curing time down, and that's going to let those bubbles pop and all on their own. I can then proceed with pouring it over what I'm creating the mold with. Again, you want to do it relatively close to your item, and you want to do a nice, slow, continuous pour. So I'm just going to let it do its thing and run and fill in the voids all around those crystals. So there we go. We're going to empty that cup out. And I don't know if you guys can see it from this angle, but this is why I'm scraping like crazy. Yep, I didn't mix enough. So another really quick batch <laughs> made up and pour it on top. And I also wanted to ensure that I had a nice thick bottom for my mold. So I batched up just a wee bit more and topped it off. Now I know I'm going to have a really good base and hopefully all will go well. All right, it's the next day and look at that. No bubbles. I'm really happy with that. So my mold turned out to be a really great mold. It gave me a hard time <laughs> extracting from the cup. It just, you know, get the scissors out, whatever, pull, tug. It finally came apart, but it created a wonderful mold. So again, just pulling and tugging and out pops the crystals. Check it out. All right. 
There's my cluster. Pretty little thing. And there is the mold. Okay. It's very thick. It's going to have lots of support. A little chunk missing there. Anyway, we are going to fill this up with None other than liquid diamonds. Oh, you, be you. Okay, so liquid diamonds is a two to one ratio. It is a very fluid. That's why I'm going to use it. Two parts of the resin, one part of the hardener, and that is going to give me some resin to color. I'm going to color it red with Casting Craft. This is going to be uh, hopefully a, like a ruby red, so we'll see with that. And I'm not exactly sure how much I am going to need, so I'm going to batch up some resin here. Again, two to one, so I'll fill it to 10 milliliters of the hardener and then up to 30 with the resin. So let's do that. All right, so into the 30 milliliters of the liquid diamonds, I'm adding 20 drops of Casting Crafts Transparent Red. And you wanna start out, I know I said I wanted it to be a ruby red, but you wanna start out and see if it's dark enough. If it's not, you can always add more. So I'm going to add five more drops and that's going to get it to the intensity that I want. You want to remember what it is that you've done, your ratio, so you can recreate it. Now I'm going to put the container into my vacuum chamber and I'm going to degas any of the bubbles. So I'm going to put it under pressure and that causes the bubbles to rise to the surface. This will leave me with a crystal clear resin to work with. Liquid Diamonds is wonderful in that way. I just want to make sure that I'm as good as I can get. All right, so I'm going to fill my mold, pouring from a very low height, and I just let it run into all those chambers. It fills up very nicely. Imagine that I mix the right amount. And pop a couple of bubbles with a small flame from a lighter, and we can see how clear it is. You can look right down into the chambers in there. And depending on the mold that you're using, it could take up to 48 hours. So I'm going to be, again, cautious since this is the first time I'm using my mold. I'm going to let it sit for 48 hours to allow that resin to get really hard. It took a lot of twisting and turning and prying, but I finally get it out of there. Well, I am super excited with the results I got from this project. I can't wait to start making more and more and more and more <laughs> crystal point molds. This is just a game changer for me. I hope you guys enjoyed my tutorial. Yes, it's a little bit wordy and a lot of different steps along the way, but every minute of it was worth getting the results like this. Just look at that beautiful ruby red color, clear as can be. Thank you so much. The Epoxy Resin Stores Liquid Diamonds is priceless for a project like this. They are just gorgeous. I am thrilled check everything out all the codes for any products that i have discount codes for you they'll be listed in the description box the epoxy resin stores products are always a favorite of mine and t experts silicone rubber worked fantastic it is a great project and it's a game changer thanks so much for watching and we'll see you here again next time on moon cusser art